Well, hello there, guys. Me, Elf, ElfNet Designs, and uh, this is a Maxon SM4000 series radio. Actually, it's a pair of them. Um, excuse me. And what we're doing here, this is programmed to GMRS because it's the only legal thing I can program these radios on. These are UHF radios. <coughs> they do have the eight channels in them for GMRS. Currently on seven because that's what we've been using. Um, and I have the 9800 out again. This is the one that was in the other video where I built the Motorola uh, simple 12 volt DC GMRS repeater with it. Controller is a controller, roughly. I personally don't like the ham radio class controllers because they have all these weird options like voice prompts and things like that that are just completely moot to GMRS. Of course, I'm sure you could do that if you just want to be humored by it, but I don't like that kind of thing. I don't even like the courtesy tones, it's, so I've turned all that off. The only thing that's on here is the ID sequence that will kick up uh, about every 60 minutes or so. Um, I got it to kick up, but eh, I even got the foam patch disabled and took the uh, button out. It'll still re work remotely, but I'm not hooking a phone line to this thing. Anyway, this is the pair of Maxons. We have a receiver. Which one is this? Yeah, we have a receiver right here. And a transmitter is over here. We've got a lot of heat oh, soldering irons on. And yeah, that's that. And I made a video not long ago on how to tap this radio for use for the repeater how to get your core how to get your uh, PTT and I have this list here color code and that will tell you the pin number jack numbers all that stuff for the receiver and the transmitter If anyone's interested, there it is. That's the way you need to tap the radios to get it. And the CSI 9800 is pretty straightforward. You have your core, your audio in, audio out, PTT, and your ground power. And you also got some auxiliary relays and things like that. But does this radio work? Well, yes, this radio works. And I just reprogrammed it to be an open squelch system. And I get out my 1250. Try not to burn my speaker mic. Actually, I don't need it because you're not going to hear it. It's, but you'll see it. And there's the repeater. It's already ID'd itself for the hour, so it's receiving. Kicking back. The tone is still in this radio is why you're not hearing a kickback, but you can see it. Um, that's a computer and this is a Maritrack. A Motorola Maritrack. Old ancient thing. Well, yeah, that's uh Hmm. Don't know what else to say about this. She does work. Oh, and then this little duplexer. A little baby duplexer here. I thought this was only a 10 water. I was able to track it down. It's a 50 watt duplexer. Little little small six can thing. Works out really nice sitting up there on top of the controller like this. Um, I am trying to work out the Arduino controller to work with these radios because I can get an Arduino a lot cheaper than I can get a CSI 9800. The problem I'm having is that the core core coming off of this is a little too high for the input pin. So I got to figure out, uh, program that thing to go low and have a transistor switch to pull the pin to ground to key up 
to activate the PTT and that would work. Uh, also, there's a matter of some audio processing transformer and things like that that I got to get around. But yeah, if I figure out the Arduino stuff without spending too much money because I've already fried two Arduinos playing with this. I've only got a couple left. I got to order some more. Um, if I figure it out, it will be in a video with some detail of how to hook it up or try to detail how to hook it up. And these radios, I think they'll, I haven't seen very many of them on eBay, but they're out there. I mean, you can find these things at ham sales for 20 bucks maybe and if you're a ham operator then you can still use these in ham radio bands if you know how to tune the vco and you can make up your old repeater uh, same way with the uhf if you know how to do the vco adjustment with the voltmeter and it, it basically what it is you're going to program your ham radio frequency in and it's going to beep and say error, beep, 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 and raise hell. Okay. You put a voltmeter in there in the test point. You pop the top, you'll see like a test point something. And you take that metal cover off in there, and there's a little resistor with a loop. Put your positive there, ground your other one, and take a plastic diddle stick and tune that capacitor until your volts get up i usually set them at about five volts it says to go seven but yeah, i like to have some variation with the radio this one's tuned to five volts both ways and so is this one you want to make sure you transmit and receiver close to the same voltage off the vco um, if it's zero low or too high this thing will go to beeping and you just tune that little little vera cap in there until it quits beeping check your voltage about four or five volts is you know anything over two volts really is good but uh, five it's a nice little round number and i could put ham in there if i wanted but i i don't not doing ham on these um doing gmrs and i got them set and they work fine uh power adjusting is on the other side and i don't know exactly the procedure without looking in the manual for that but yeah, um, you could cross band or whatever you want, as long as you got a controller. You know, the RM10, Repeater Maker 10, will work with this. The CSI 9800, the CES32 and Super32 community panels, the Zetron ZR310 will work with this. Just a variety, and I'm pretty sure some of the basement built ham radio board level controllers that are on eBay will work with this just fine. Um, <clears throat> just keep in mind that the core voltage on this is a little high, it's higher than five volts coming off. I think it's actually B plus level coming off of here, so you, you gotta kind of finesse that with the current limiting resistor and a transistor and get it to go low and, or whatever and work but i'm thinking that's the route that i'm going to have to take with an arduino to get it to go i would rather use an arduino because it would greatly reduce this package down to where i could strap these top for top and have it all together that way um as for the Maritrack, 100 watts does work. I am going to be working on something here, uh, GMRS, but I am going to kick this down to 50 watts. I can't legally use it on 100, but yeah, it seems kind of a waste, wasting 50 watts, and I can't use it in the commercial band anymore. This is one of the first radios I got with my truck back in the day. Yeah, this was given to me by a friend who had a bunch of them who was a ham operator who couldn't use them in ham because you can't program these really to ham they don't like it damn fine radio just need a new control cable and i'm gonna try to get in here direct and do it but but yeah this uh, the maxon sm 4000 gmrs repeater these are damn fine talking radios, damn good radios if you find one. Good power, good mod, good ears, adjustable squelch control. Uh, if you don't want to make a repeater from them, you can scan and prioritize them. 16 channels is a max. 
good talking radios, damn fine radios for the budget. The only problem is that there is no gaskets in these radios, so water and dirt and things can easily get in. So if you're going to use them in a vehicle, make sure, you know, you're not going to be doing any, like, off-road stuff or whatever, or leaving windows open. If you're going to use them as a repeater, get them in a case where dust and shit can't get out of them or water. Other than that, they make a damn fine, like, mobile site repeater setup. Um, they don't use hardly any power. Um, you know, you can run these off of a battery on them 7 amp hour, uh, USP batteries, one of these types here, these HR1234W, uh, batteries. This is actually a new battery, it's just that tapes all over it. I let it sit too long, and tape kind of got on it, it sat too long out in the shop without the air conditioner on, and it just got taped on it. <laughs> but yeah, um, I like this thumb up, and I'm gonna try not to harp on the hams hard anymore. I know I did in the past, and I know that all ham operators aren't bad. I just just a few of them left this bad taste in my mouth in the past, and just you know, I I'm gonna try not to harp on you guys too hard in the future, and I do apologize for that, but. You know, if you'd experienced some of the crap that I've experienced with them, you'd probably understand it a little better. Um, but anyway, I'm Elf Elfnet Designs, and I will see you guys in the next video.